Okay, a lot to talk about <laughs> with this episode. You know, it's funny that I was talking shit about it before it started. I was talking shit about the show before it started, and then they pull out a really good episode. I think the last two have been really good, so I don't know, maybe we're turning another corner. I just... The show has been so uneven lately. <laughs> but I'm, I, I really liked this one. I thought it was really good. There were a couple things, have a couple criticisms, but for the most part, I really, really liked it, so... Let's get into it, because there's a lot. So I wish the show did a better job of keeping track of how much time has passed, because Negan has a wife and a child on the way. And uh, so we know they've, that he's been gone at least 12 weeks. <laughs> but um, I really have no idea how long everyone has been at the Commonwealth. And I think it it's a really important thing for us to know. Um, I think in general, this, huh, <laughs> this whole episode and uh, this whole season could have been so much better. I mean, this episode was good, but it could have been so much better if what had led up to it had been better, which is the way that they've handled the Commonwealth. It should have been a, you know, a slow burn, and then this is the episode where it boils over, right? All of the tensions, all the various tensions boil over, and now the shit's gonna hit the fan. And no, it's nothing new for The Walking Dead. That's what they always do. I, I just think that the storytelling for the Commonwealth has been so uneven and I think that if it had been more nuanced uh, this could have been really good <laughs> but let's focus on the positive the other criticism is Negan having a wife and child on the way like what is, what the hell is that about I I don't even know this woman's name I don't care about her why they did this this with Leah introduced a random love interest of Daryl's and that went over swimmingly, didn't it, right? Everybody just loved that. And now they're doing it again with Negan. I just wonder how disposable this woman is. We know that Negan is getting a spinoff. And so are they setting up this woman and this child to be part of the spinoff? Or is she going to die and essentially be fridged to motivate Negan. Uh, either way, I don't like it. You know, I don't even mind that she's pregnant. If we were going to get to know her from this point, like, oh yeah, you know, we, we're together, uh, and it's been a few months, and oops, she's pregnant, and you know, now we're going to get to know this woman over the course of the rest of season 11, and then she'll be a part of the spinoff. If that's the case, like, great, but why have them already married? Ah, oh, this show, it's like, it's, it's so close. Like, you're, it's, you almost had it. You almost had it. But they, they just can't stick the landing. I don't know. Um, but those are really my only criticisms for the episode. So let's t <laughs> talk about the good stuff. Negan. Oh my god, that scene. Negan is such a beautifully complex character. He is, has such a complicated relationship with Maggie and obviously with Herschel. I loved that scene. I do wish that Herschel was... Uh, I wish that he had more lines. I think the kid is a pretty good actor, so I think he could have handled some more lines. And I wish that he had just been more developed as a character so that we care. Because we only care about this kid because it's Glenn's kid, right? We don't care about him in the way that we care about Judith. Like, I love Judith as her own person, as a character in her own right, not because she's Rick Grimes' daughter, but because she's fucking cool and I love her. And I wish that I felt the same way about Herschel. Um, I think that the scene would have carried more weight if I cared about Herschel as a character 
in and of himself and not just as an extension of Glenn. However, it was still a really powerful moment between the two of them and Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I mean, I was tearing up. He's so, he's so fucking good. He's so fucking good. Ah, loved it. And, uh, you know, it's funny because I was just having this conversation with a friend when, um, or just a few days ago, I, I guess, where we were talking about, like, what's going to happen to Herschel. And I was saying that I think it would be really interesting, considering how much Negan loves children, it would be really interesting to have Negan interacting with Herschel. Um, because, you know... Presumably, Herschel is going to be a part of the spinoff as well. Um, and so, I mean, you would assume. <laughs> I'm sure nothing's going to happen to him. And hopefully she wouldn't leave him behind. I wouldn't think so. I was kind of hoping that we would get some, you know, really interesting scenes um, between them in the spinoff. And I didn't expect to get it so soon <laughs> in this show. So I'm really glad that I did. But like I said, I do wish that Herschel was more of a character and that he had more lines. But otherwise, like it was just so good. It was so good. Ah, Negan and Lydia. I love their relationship. I wish that they uh, had more of a conversation. I hope that they do. And I really hope that Lydia is a part of the spinoff as well. I hope she goes. I have no spoilers. I have <laughs> no information. But I think that Lydia has so much insight. You know, she knows what the Commonwealth is all about. And I think that, you know, with her upbringing, with her mother, who obviously was a bad person, but uh, also kind of brilliant. And I think that Lydia has a lot of insight. I'm, I'm disappointed that she hasn't gotten more focus. And there's just too many damn characters. There's too many damn characters on this show that we really can't pay attention to very many people. So um, I really hope that she's part of the spinoff, the, the Negan Maggie spinoff, because I think that she would fit beautifully in that dynamic and then we could really you know give like I, I she needs to be a more central character because i think the actress is so good and the character is just so interesting and has such a great backstory that she could draw from i really want more lydia it's a, it's a shame that they just kind of forgot that lydia and daryl had a special relationship because i was really into that in season 10 but I do love the relationship between her and Negan, and I hope we get a lot more of it. I also just love seeing so many of my favorite characters in a single episode because I feel like well, I don't get that a lot anymore. Um, so, and it was a really nice to, um, again, to have Lydia, to have Negan back. Um, you know, Aaron, again, I, I, Aaron doesn't get enough to do, but... That's maybe my personal bias because he's one of my favorites. But yeah, I, I I liked seeing Carol. I feel like we haven't seen much of Carol in season 11, which is okay because she got so much attention in season 10 and the bonus episodes and everything. And also because I know that she's going to be part of the spinoff. So I'm not concerned that I'm not getting enough Carol, but it, whenever she pops up, I'm just so happy to see her because obviously I love her so much. And I wonder, I wonder, so I, I love it when people underestimate Carol, but I wonder if Lance maybe does have an idea of who he's dealing with. That would be a nice twist if Carol thinks that she's, you know, doing her thing, her innocent housewife kind of routine but I mean she's already her and Hornsby um uh, that is his name right Lance Hornsby because I feel like that's I think that's his name anyway um so yeah so she has maybe shown too much of herself to him if that makes sense um I mean, she's sharp as a tack, and she's not really playing dumb with him. She's just playing like, 
more like she's just on his side, like she understands, uh, you know, like she's playing the game, right? She's playing the game. And, but we all know that Carol really isn't playing the game. She's playing her own game. <laughs> Carol makes the rules always. <laughs> but I do wonder how much Hornsby kind of suspects who Carol really is and what he's up against with her because that, like I said, would be a nice twist. So, um, yeah, I enjoyed that. It was a really nice setup to have um, Carol and Daryl make a lunch date and then it explained why she showed up to rescue them. And I shouldn't really... It's not really a good thing to praise The Walking Dead for basic storytelling, but they struggle with that kind of thing so much that I notice when they do it well. You know, just a simple, having a simple uh, conversation, a simple moment in the beginning of the episode where they're like, hey, we'll meet for lunch. And then that explains why she's there to rescue them. And I love that she brought Mercer. And Mercer seems to be fully on our team now, fully on our side, and I like that. As I said in the last review, I think Mercer is the only thing, the only aspect of the Commonwealth that they've done really, really well the whole way through. And, you know, um, you never really knew in the beginning what side he was going to fall on, but I think most of us expected that he would end up on our side. But... They just, they did it in such a, uh, in such a subtle, nuanced way that it was enjoyable to watch. And so, yeah, that's one of the aspects that they've handled really well. And I'm excited. I like Mercer. He's a, a cool character. So I didn't get to my other criticism, which is the fact that there was no tension in scenes where there should be tension because of the announcement of the goddamn spinoffs. Ah, the thing is, is that I'm happy and I don't, I mean, I'm preaching to the choir here. Like, I think we all feel the same way, right? We're all, most of us anywhere, are happy or at least indifferent about the existence of the spinoffs, but didn't want the announcement now. Because in that scene, when they are, you know, going through that, that house full of zombies, I said in the reaction, like, the only person I'm worried about is Rosita, but that's only by default. I wasn't actually worried about Rosita, but she's the only character that we care about in that situation who is vulnerable. And <laughs> it would have been, you know, so much better if we had, you know, any kind of inkling that something could happen to Daryl or Carol. And then when Herschel turns the gun on Negan, that could have been filled with tension. But it wasn't because I know that Negan is going to survive. And it really spoiled what could have been an even more electrifying scene. If I was genuinely worried because, you know, in a situation like that, you're not just worried that Negan would die, but you're also worried for, and, and again, this would play better if Herschel was more of a character, but you're also worried for the character holding the gun because you know that if they pull that trigger, then they have to live with that for the rest of their lives. And so you don't want that for either character, right? And... So, again, it would have played better <laughs> if there was some real tension, if there were some real stakes there, but of course, they robbed us of that, which is really a shame. But still a great scene, still a great scene. I am pleased that the CIA guy is dead. That was satisfying. Not as satisfying as that little prick, whatever his name is. Oh, I can't wait till he dies. I hate that guy in a good way. I hate him in the way that we're supposed to hate him, right? Like he's he's doing a great job. <laughs> um, you know, he's there to be hated and I fucking hate him. So well done. <laughs> but the CIA guy, I was prepared for that to last two more episodes. And I was really glad that Aaron just got the upper hand and took him out. He deserved it. And um, yeah. It, I, that was very, very satisfying. And I'm glad that it didn't stretch out for any longer than it needed to. 
I also think the show did a really good job setting up the um, the reveal of Leah and that it's her, she was the one who stole the weapons because um, a lot of times the show does stuff that just feels pointless, but this actually... I, I don't know if it led anywhere as far as the characters go, but we know that, like, it, it, we, you know, the characters don't know, but it at least led somewhere interesting for us, the viewers, because the whole time we're like, okay, well, these people obviously stole the weapons, because that's what we're told, and they're saying that they didn't, and so we're like, okay, well, I guess they didn't, and the whole time I was thinking, well, it didn't matter who stole the weapons, but... Turns out it does because Leah's back. And I have to say, that reveal was awesome. She looks like a badass. And I'm hoping that Leah is back to be the villain that I want her to be. I think that she has so much potential to be an incredible villain. And I would like her to fulfill that <laughs> potential. But I honestly, I, I expect a redemption arc. I think that's where we're headed. And I think that's a shame because... Um, I just think she would be a great villain. But also, at the same time, like, <sighs> do we need to throw something else into the mix? And <sighs> I, I don't know. I mean, maybe she's gonna, maybe she's gonna come in and she's gonna help Daryl, um, against the Commonwealth or something like that. I don't know. But I, I knew, I knew she was going to come back. I mean, I think we all knew that she was going to come back. And, you know, maybe it'll tie, maybe, maybe, they, maybe I will be eating my words and they will tie everything together, the Reapers and the Commonwealth and everything. It'll just all to be tied up in a nice little bow. And, uh, and I will be happy to eat my words if that happens because... I felt like the Reapers were pretty pointless. I felt like Leah was extremely pointless. But maybe it'll lead somewhere interesting. And like I said, I want her to be a villain. <laughs> uh, but I think that we're probably headed for a redemption arc just because she's someone who's close to Daryl. But I think it'd just be so much more interesting if she was a villain. But anyway, we'll see what happens with that. It was a hell of a reveal, though, and I, I really like that. And yeah, she looks like a badass. And so I'm actually excited to see what they do with it. I, I Like I said, two episodes in a row, They've it's been good. So huh, maybe I've been too harsh. Maybe I've been too harsh on The Walking Dead. Or maybe it's like, maybe the... <laughs> I always feel like I'm in an abusive relationship with The Walking Dead. It's like, they're mean to me, and then, you know, they bring me flowers, and I say, okay, everything's forgiven. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just forget about all the bad things. I don't know, but I'm just so happy when they pull out a good episode, even though it wasn't perfect, and the last one wasn't perfect either. And then at the same time, I go... I'm happy because this show managed to string together two pretty good episodes. And I'm patting it on the back for that. It's just like, oh, The Walking Dead is so frustrating. <laughs> it's so it's so frustrating. And my relationship to The Walking Dead is so complicated and frustrating. I I don't know. But anyway, this was a really good episode and I'm excited for the next one. And I think I'm going to go ahead and watch it right now because... I was behind on an episode anyway, so I might as well catch up, right? So anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.